Across Britain, there's a hidden network of canals, more than 2,000 miles long. Many of them cut through some of the most stunning scenery. And in this series, I've chosen eight canal trips, the very best, from the west coast of Scotland to the southwest of England. I'm going to take part, aren't I? <laughs> I'll be exploring their stories. Am I helping? Discovering why and how they were built. A spectacular piece of engineering. And looking at their impact as Britain moved into the industrial age. <laughs> On this trip, I'm setting out along the Air and Calder navigation. It was built to link the rivers of the northeast, giving the industrial cities of the north access to the east coast and the world beyond. I'll be starting out along the River Humber, then the River Ouse, and then along the Air and Calder navigation towards Leeds. This canal is still an important commercial waterway, and enthusiasts are determined to keep it that way. Along my route, I'll be all at sea, getting even fitter than before and tasting Yorkshire's answer to French champagne. I'll be meeting the people who live, work and play along the canal's length. This isn't the sort of quiet, calm, countryside canal marina we're used to. I've come to the big business port of Hull alongside the mighty River Humber, and I'm going to travel from here along the oldest canal in Britain still in commercial use. <laughs> I'm going to join the Humber Princess, carrying its cargo of oil, the equivalent of 11 lorries worth in one single load. Hello. Hello, John. Pleased right, to meet you. You're morning. Dry. Yeah, I'm the captain this morning. All right. And we're going to take it, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to take you it. And me. Yeah, yeah, me and you are going to take it all the way there, John. <laughs> all the way. Skipper Duane Ball will be taking me over 30 miles on his 200 foot long barge from Hull Docks, down along the River Humber, beneath the Humber Bridge, and on to the inland port of Goole. Go. Yes, no Driving. problem, John. There we go. Well, what's this? Why haven't got a break before? No, wheel? this is a tiller wheel. This is we're in the 21st century now, John. There's no <laughs> need for the spokes anymore. All right, well, I thought I was going to be doing no, this. No, no, them days are gone now, John. It's a bit more like a computer game. Now, Very good. Don't fetch your back, please, John, to midships. That way? Yeah, back to midships. Just so your I'll... voice is getting a little bit nervous. What about the horn? Can I press the horn? Yeah, you can press the horn. Okay. John. Yeah. It's a pity that there isn't some small boat that we could just do that to. Give him a bit of a fright. Oh, well. Right. Hello, the wheelhouse down, there we go. Look, this is for getting under the bridges in the canal system. Right. It will go down all the way, John, but that's as far as we want to go yeah. for today. Right, so can I press it to yeah, go back up again? Yeah, you can press it back up, John. Up we go, second floor. And the masts have to go down too. Yeah, the masts have to go down, all the railings, the radar. Everything has to go down for us to get underneath the bridges. Under so, so up the canals? Yes, up the canals, up to uh, Rogrum, uh, Leeds. Leeds, Ferry yeah. Bridge, and that's what it was built for in the 1970s. Yeah, that's great. This was one of the great trading routes of Britain. When the alternative was to use primitive roads, this was a vital artery. It was fully opened up by the Air and Calder Navigation Company in 1826. We're now in the River Ouse. In the River Ouse, yeah. Right, and narrow, isn't it? Yeah. Quite narrow, getting narrow. Getting narrow, yeah. We head on to Goole, Britain's most inland port. Oh, so the gates are closing now. Yeah. was a very important shipping port. Coal was brought down here by canal from the Yorkshire pits and loaded on to seagoing vessels. They used an ingenious hoist which lifted the coal up in huge tubs from the water and poured it into the holds of ships. And the hoist is still here today. Since 1986, the coal trade is no more, but some of these tubs can still be seen. 
they were unique to the Aaron Calder and were known as Tom Puddings. All of Chris Sherborne's family worked on them. Right, there it is inside Tom Pudding. 20 tonne of coal in there. And what would they do? This was towed up the canal backwards, empty, to the pits, and the pits usually had a small railway out of the pit down to the canal side. Then they was all coupled together in a chain and towed back down to go to the hoist. The Tom Pudding's pretty much moved most of the coal over the last 150 years from, from the pits from West Yorkshire, South Yorkshire. To pull this, though, you need a tug, don't you? You need a tug, yeah. And this is one of those that, that pulled all these Tom Puddings? That's the very one, yes. One of yeah. only six that was made for yeah. that job in particular. We took it down to the down the Thames for the Queen's pageant. So that must have been something to that take That was something that. else, yes. So um, you were one of the boats in the, in the Royal Pageant, were Yeah, you? we was the first of the commercial craft. There we yeah. go, which was lovely, yeah. We put my dad back aboard when we got down there and we actually gave him the wheel. He actually went past the Queen. He steered past the Queen. So we can say he's pretty much done everything you could do with one of these type of tubs. Oh, that's terrific. Thank you. The air and call to navigation was England's leading cargo route, able to take barges of up to 700 tonnes. Coal and grain were the main freight, up to two and a half million tonnes a year as well as aggregates, steel, timber and oil. The canal linked Goole to the industrial cities of the north, Rotherham, Wakefield and Leeds, which is where I'm heading with skipper Gerald Jones. We're now in the Air and Calder Navigation. Well, we are in the Air and Calder Navigation. Where it becomes a bit more like an ordinary canal. Yes. And but why is it so wide? Uh, a, to provide a constant level, because the wider it is, the more water it holds. A lot of ships come in the dock, the water's got to come from somewhere here. So by having it wider, it takes longer to drop. And the other reason, of course, is that barges have got bigger and bigger, like the one you came up today. Yeah. And they need more room to be able to steer and manoeuvre themselves yeah. better. And it means, like the one we were on, for, you know, earlier today, it means they could come all the way down here without any difficulty That's at all. That's right. Yeah. And further on, it's even wider. <laughs> a large waterway running slap through the Yorkshire coal fields attracted factories along its banks. In 1828, the journey from Goole to Leeds could be done in just eight hours. This was a commercial highway. Back of the canal, industrial developments in towns such as Castleford thrived with innovators and entrepreneurs. One of these was a Manchester doctor called Thomas Allenson, whose company bought this flour mill in Castleford. Allenson was a radical thinker ahead of his time. He believed in vegetarianism, alternative medicine, and above all, in a healthy diet. I always advise people to eat brown bread. Those who eat white bread often suffer from inward craving. To cure this, recourse is often made to beer, wine, or spirits. If they ate brown bread, we should be a more sober nation. And not just brown bread, but bread made with flour ground between two huge stones, stone ground, to keep nutrients which might otherwise be lost. Steve Norman keeps the old grinding wheel turning. Right, this is the, the largest stone grinding mill in the country. It is. This would actually act, flip over onto the top and sit on top of there. So why did the Allenson family, when they were running this place, why did they need this particular system of stone grinding? There's nothing wasted. Everything that goes in uh, is in that bread. It gives you all the nutrients. The big slogan is, now take now. Here we go. This is the wheat, and you just put it in here. Just put it in there, keep it topped up. I'm going to get this stone started by a tap on the floor. Right. And there you go now. Right. You can see the wheat. They use electricity now, but it's the stones that still do the grinding. You'll notice how well I've done this. Look at that. Now taken out there. Now right. taken out. Beautiful week. <laughs> there you go. Right. Thanks very much. Not a problem. And that makes me rather proud. Who am I? You can call me the Master Grinder. 
Castle Ford, the canal has 11 miles to go to Leeds, but I'm going to take a detour to the left down the Wakefield branch to Stanley Ferry, southeast of Leeds. I'm going to a factory upon which the entire canal system depends. Here they make lock gates for a whole canal network. It's a specialised craft using techniques handed down over 200 years. Hello, Andrew. Hi, John. Andrew Bayliss is in charge. What's it made of? This is uh, British oak. Good. That's good. Lord Nelson would have approved of that. Good old British oak. So when was this system designed? I mean, how old is it? Oh, hundreds of years is this yeah. design. It, we basically followed it exactly the same way they did hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And this is, <laughs> this is a completed one. This is one I made earlier. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? Well, basically, this is what we call a de-oop on top of the actual lock gate itself. Yeah. And this is a tenon where the balance beam goes on the actual lock gate itself. Yes. We've got T's and L's, which sandwich the joint to make them stronger. Mm -hmm. What do these do? Do these pull it all together? That's correct, yeah. They're what we call a tie bar. And how long will it last? Roughly around about 25 years. 25 years? Right. But it's only here, in this place, that people know about how to make lock gates. That's correct, yeah. Without this place, a whole of the waterway system, that's it. It's the end, isn't it? Yes, it would certainly go into disrepair, that's certainly. Yeah. This right. is what we call a pin, and each region has different types of pins. Can you look at that and say, I know where that's going to that's go? That's correct, yeah. What is it? That's an Oxford pin. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's an Oxford <laughs> pin? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it looks a bit uh, academic. <laughs> <laughs> How much do they vary, the lock gates? Well, every lock chamber is different. So each one of these is tailor-made? Well, we go out and measure on site, and then we've got records going back years which we can actually compare the new dimensions, what we've got on site. So it is like tailoring, isn't it? That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Put about this and heritage. Yes. Heritage to the nearest millimetre. Yes. Gosh, I never thought I'd like lock gates as much as I do now. This Grand Canal still carries thousands of tonnes of cargo a year. But despite the industry, it can also be incredibly peaceful. I'm now well over halfway from Ghoul to Leeds, and at the end of a long day, a quiet mooring is just what I need. I'm outside Stanley Ferry on the Air and Calder Canal, about 15 miles from Leeds. So far on this journey, I haven't been short of company, but suddenly, I seem to be on my own. Well, almost. Morning. Morning. At last, signs of life. Hello. Hello. Can we see your boat? You certainly can. Manchester. The Norton family welcome me aboard La Belle. It's a bit better than our boat. <laughs> We've got autopilot for when we're out at sea. And also under You could cover. take this out to sea, can you? Yeah. Yeah. You could take it all the way to the continent? Ten years' time, hopefully that's where I'll be, in the south of France. <laughs> With this. <laughs> okay. With La Belle. That'll be suitable, won't it? Okay. Okay, here we go. Well, this is nice, isn't it? Nice big areas, as we call it, like the living room area. Yeah. And the children have got the bikes up here, haven't they? We do actually live on the boat. Yes. And um, we live at Viking Marina in Gull. Oh, so you uh, live so on the boat. Can... Is that all the time? All the time. When you say you live on a boat, are your friends surprised? Yeah. Some of them have come to sleep. Have they? Yes. Well, how do you find living on, on the boat? We wouldn't go back to living in a house. Wouldn't you? No. We both commute to work and commute the kids to school. And, yeah, and what, yeah. what jobs do you do? Um, I'm a teaching assistant at a high school and John's a mechanic at Jaguar. Well, actually, I must say, you, you, I'm <laughs> taken by you lot. You are, you're terrific. Really pleased to have met you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. 
I'm impressed by their way of life. I can see the appeal, especially on this canal, because it's got the space. You can have a big boat and you can turn it around wherever you like. After all, this canal was designed for big boats. And this is the oldest stretch, built in 1700 to enable large boats to enter the busy wharf in Leeds, then a hub of the industrial north. This is quite unlike any of the other canals we've been on. It's so, it's so wide and it is beautiful. We're in the northeast of England and you think we're miles away from the continent, but not when you're on this canal. You think this is, it's like all those big boats you see going along the canals of Holland or Belgium or France. Forget the canal du Midi, this is the canal du Northeast, and very nice it is too. Très bon. The canal joins other waterways. I'm now on the River Air. Hello. How are you? Great. How many have you got on board? Lots. <laughs> Lo lots, have you? How many families? Uh, we're all family, but the two of us live on board, and then we're all... Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you've got a great boat. Another family afloat, living on a large boat and enjoying the freedom of this spacious waterway. I've been trying to get to grips with the character of this canal. Now that the industry is gone, this western section feels wild, almost unexplored, as if searching for an identity. I'm stopping off a few miles short of Leeds at Woodlesford. And before I even moor up, I can already see that the canal here has captured the enthusiasm of the local people. In picturesque Woodlesford, the Horticultural Society have won prizes for their efforts. Cheers. <laughs> Is it moving? Hello. 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 You're the gardeners, aren't yeah, you? Yes. Yeah. You're the heroes. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> there you are, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. We decided to create a bed specially for you. Really? There's John Sargent Garden. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a lot tidier than I am. <laughs> Still some planting to do on it, obviously. You can see okay. the plant pots. Oh, back there. Back there, just so it's close to you. It should pop off. Right, there we are. Right on cue. OK. All right. OK, now everybody watch this, all right? <laughs> We're talking. Oh, yeah. This is why I kneel down and pray, it'll be all right. OK, here we go. It's a bit low, isn't it? We'll bring the soil up to it. Oh, well, yes, of course we will. I'd forgotten. <laughs> I'd forgotten about the soil. <laughs> right, here we go. Oh, that's a bit better. Oh, that's a better strip. This one, yeah. yeah. Down the ropes. What do you think? Work. I think you'll need to pull. What? I think, yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. No, please, please. Please. No, no. It was nothing, honestly. No. You're blooming good. Really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Thank you. That's lovely. Yeah. Woodlesford Lock attracts all sorts of outdoor activities. We have the leaner we are. Yeah, so. well, I can't, I can't advise on this. But <laughs> I'm not. Uh, Change legs, ladies. I'm <laughs> round, have a go, all right. Let me just. I'll, I'll be next to you because I think you know what you're doing. Foot onto the right, step and then right. just push Whoops. up. Whoops. Steady as you lunge back okay. down. Right, down. Hold on to your trousers. Hold on to my trousers. <laughs> well, that's, that's it. Down right. nice and careful, that's it. So just brace your stomach muscles. Right. Chest nice and tall, that's it. Right. And do I have Something to look like as if it. I'm enjoying it? Or can Smile I all the way, yes, definitely. Uh, I, I wanted to sort of say. <laughs> I'm exhausted already. Okay. Oh, please, please. We did that with the gardeners just a moment ago. They're, they're just, I want to stay here. I want to live here forever. This is terrific. Thanks a lot. Keep at it. Back up, ladies. It's good to see how this section of the canal has been brought back to life. And there's another bonus. A canal this big has an extraordinary effect. It's even enabled a local vineyard to flourish here, in Yorkshire. George Bowden makes around 20,000 bottles a year from his six-acre vineyard. Hello, George. Oh, 
John. <laughs> nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you, John. Uh, welcome to 11th Hall Vineyard. Uh, and, and Yorkshire wine. Yorkshire wine. Believe it or not, wine's been grown in Yorkshire since Roman times. Now, when you first were looking for sites, how did you manage to choose this? Uh, in the middle of January, brilliant sunshine after heavy snowfall, and I noticed coming up the hill here that the snow on this particular piece of land had almost disappeared. So that told me it's a warm field, yes. and the drainage is fantastic. And why does the canal help you? It gives extra warmth, along with the river, to the area. Really? And plus, plus also, uh, it'll create, in times of frost, it'll create mists rather than frosts. So it's just a strange little microclimate. A little microclimate in this little piece yeah. of land. So you, you can thank the canal. I'll write her a letter, I think. So <laughs> Say, thank you, canal. <laughs> thank You've you done canal. your bit. <laughs> so we could be in France. Uh, near enough, I think. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I think we ought to be a bit more frank. Yeah, 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 well, you so. look a bit French. <laughs> you do. It's, up, it's the big nose, is it? Yes. Oh. 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 Pardon. Ah. Bon. But, mm, Yorkshire. We are in Yorkshire. It's, it's wonderful. Well, thank you and very much. To try a bottle of uh, Leventhal Brut. Oh, that's very kind of you, thank you. Well, I must say, that was a canal side bonus that few people would have guessed. A rival to Champagne, grown just six miles south of Leeds. The air and colder navigation, one of the best, one of the most impressive canals in Britain. And I can certainly drink to that with the local vintage, of course. And very nice it is, too. Rather like the Aaron Calder Canal. Understated, but full of surprises.